thank you for your grace. Thank you for that agape love you give to each and every one of us, each and every day of our lives. Sometimes not deserving, but you give it to us anyway. Father God, as I come this morning, I ask that you bless our pastor and the first family, all of the triumphant members. Father God, we know we're going through perilous times at this present time, but we know, Father God, you said in your word, look to the hills from which all your help, all your help come from us, from you and you alone. We thank you, Lord, and we just bless and we just praise your holy and most righteous name on this day. We pray for our sick, the sick and the shut in, all our members here at Triumphant that are sick and that are going through. But Lord, we have to believe and look to you, the, the author and the finisher of our faith. Look to you, Lord, because you are, as the words say, are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You are a promise keeper. You are a light in the darkness. So Lord, if we look to you from where all our help coming from, we will be fine. Father God, I don't want to say a selfish prayer. I pray for those that are going through. I pray that Jehovah Shalom, the Jehovah of peace, rain down on the families that are going through in the different parts of the world. That peace come to them, that love come to them, that we all get together on one accord because you are a God of love. You're not a God of confusion. So, Lord, if we abide by your rules and your precepts that you have already set in place, if we abide by those, Father God, we will see an outcome. But I ask in the name of Jesus on this day that you keep us. Keep triumphant. Keep us, Lord, because you said in your word that we were triumphant. So bless and keep us, Lord. And, Father God, on this day, open up our hearts and our minds and our eyes and our ears to receive the message that will be brought today. Father God, let us be doers. Let's not come in and look and not go back out better than what we came in. So Lord, we just thank you. We just praise your holy and righteous name. We ask, Holy Spirit, come in. Habitate, habitate within us, Lord. Stay, go from breast to breast, from heart to heart. And let us know that you have been here. So when we leave this place, people will see God in us and know that uh, God is in us and we're in God. So, Father God, I just thank you this morning. I just praise you. I give all manner and honor and glory to you on this day. In Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen and amen. And that is your call to worship this morning.
triumph. Let the church say amen. Glory to God. Come and give him all the praise. All the worship, Lord God, belongs to you. Someone tell him, that all the praise, oh God, belongs to you, God. Say the Lord inhabits the praises of his people. Songwriter put it like this when praises go up, I say blessings come down. Then when praises go up, hallelujah, blessings come down.
Because there's so many things to praise the yeah. God. Yeah. And he's a wonderful counselor, God. Yeah. 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 An everlasting God. Yeah. An everlasting Father. The Bible says he's the Prince of Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed his name. Yeah. Come on, let's go back and get this one.
You way back then. About him, yes. him, 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 about him, 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 about him, 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 yes. Yes. him, 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 invite you to come and worship with us in a revival June 1st through 3rd 2022 7 p.m. Calvary Church 4995 Indiana Avenue Vicksburg song praise and worship Dr. Tellis Chapman pastor of Galilee MB Church in Detroit Michigan would deliver the gospel message Pleasant Valley MB Church, 260 Highway 27, Vicksburg, Mississippi, Revival, Guest Evangelist, the Reverend Roderick Walker of Tabernacle of Praise MB Church, Los Angeles, California, the date June 22nd through 24, 2022, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, 7 p.m. nightly, Dr. Joe Harris, Jr., Pastor. Breast and Cervical Cancer Screening Day, women and men. Free mammograms and pap smears. No insurance required. June 10th, 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. Call to schedule an appointment. The number is 662-314-8038. And this is a service through United Way 920 South Street, Vicksburg, Mississippi. And now a triumphant word from our pastor. Amen. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Thank you, Sister Harris, for uh, your filling in for our uh, announcer who's not here with us on today, uh, but still with her family uh, after the death of her uncle. So, we're in prayer for the family. Amen. Amen. Let me say good morning to all of you. This is a day that the Lord has made. The Bible declares we shall rejoice. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. We are grateful today for uh, those who are watching our broadcast this morning by uh, the airways of Facebook. Come on, encourage them as they tune in to our broadcast this morning. We are elated. We are thankful for your presence on this morning, and we hope and pray that something we say and share uh, will bless you on this morning. 
we are thankful for the Lord's grace and for his mercy that he continues to shower down upon us on a daily basis. Amen. So we have so much to be thankful. Let, let, let me say to you, church, we, we got so much to be thankful for. Listen, you know, just look around our country and this world and see all the horrific things that are going on. Young people are being killed senselessly by people who have brains that are confused and in a state of mental turmoil because they are not connected to the true and living God. And now we have young people who are dead because of this senseless, heinous act that has transpired in Texas. But let me paint this picture for you so you can see it on the level that you need to see it because a few weeks ago, this tragedy hit Buffalo, New York. But the people in Texas never thought that it would happen in their community. Just like you and I think that it won't happen in ours. But just a few weeks later now, we're dealing with mothers and fathers and grandfathers and family members who are dealing with the loss of their child, their grandchild, their sisters, their brothers. The question become, as Paul says in the book of Galatians chapter number 6, he says, now consider yourself. How would you feel and how would you respond if it was you? Let me tell you how I responded when I saw it on television myself with my own eyes. I sat in front of the television and I cried because it affected me just that much. Because I thought about my children, even though they're adults. I thought about my grandchildren. And tears just rolled down my eyes. And God just really allowed me to see that that could have been you. And we must learn how to value this life that God has given us. We must take every day like it's the last day on this earth. To make sure that God is getting the best out of us. And we give him everything we got. Why? Tomorrow is not promised to no man. Well, Pastor, how do you know that? But the Bible says there's only one step between you and death. And I'm suggesting to you, you don't know when that step is going to be between you and death. Today is somebody else. Within the next few seconds, it can be you. And I want to say to you, love your family while you have an opportunity. Put aside hate, bitterness, frustration, all of the stuff that has no value that the devil has blinded us with, and we walk around mad for 400 years for things that has no validity. But we make it be more than what it is. And I want to offer to you this morning the sentiments of a heart that's broken. Pain don't know any personality or body. She doesn't care who she encumbers. And when she comes, how you deal with it speaks volumes about where you stand and where your faith lies. Because God is on the throne. And he still has this world in the palm of his hand. And everything that's horrific that's going on, God is still in control, church. Let me say that again. God would never give his authority over to nobody. And it seemed like the devil has more authority than God. That's not true. The scripture says that God lent him a season to be in the position of having authority in the realm of the earth. But the final say-so is in the hand of our Lord and Savior. 
And I'm glad I'm on the winning team. I don't know about you, but I'm glad that I serve a true and living God. I'm glad this morning to know that God is still God and he loves us. No matter what it looks like, God still loves us. So as you're walking around this morning, and as you're moving through the day, take a moment as you celebrate on tomorrow Memorial Day. And some of you may ask the question, what do I have to memorialize? First of all, memorialize the fact that Jesus is still king. He went on that cross and think about how his father felt, but yet he gave him over to death that you and I may have right to this tree of life. If you have nothing else to consider the reason why you ought to celebrate Memorial Day, think about what God has already done for you by sending Jesus to die in your place because the Bible declares we all should be dead, sleeping in our grave. But he made death behave itself. He came down and bought us back and snatched us out of the hands of the enemy and paid the penalty with his own life. And now he's sitting on the right hand of the Father praying and making intercession. That's why he's our paracletus. He's making an intercession. When you talk to me, he's listening to you. So talk to him like you're really concerned about the things of this world, but most important, that you love him with an unfailing love. The next thing you ought to think about when you memorialize and celebrate Memorial Day on tomorrow, look at what God has done for you through your foreparents. You wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't for them. They gave a whole lot that you may have this freedom. And we have so much to thank God for. I'm grateful this morning. I'm glad to know that battles was fought that I didn't have to fight before I got here. And the victory was won because if it had a fallen and fell, I wouldn't be standing where I'm standing and living the way I'm living. So I'm grateful as I think about what God has used others to do for us. And lastly, if you're looking for something to memorialize your faith in and celebrate for, just allow the setting of these past few weeks to rest at your doorstep and say, it should have been me, not could have been me, it should have been me, but I'm still here. And that's enough to tell the Lord thank you. Do I have any witness in this place? That's enough to tell the Lord thank you. He's worthy. God is worthy, I tell you. He is worthy. Listen, he's more worthy than you can ever imagine. Because just a few Sundays ago, a shooting took place in a church in California. Don't you know it can happen right here? A mad person can walk through those doors and enter to our sanctuary and do just what was happening or had happened last a few weeks ago. Because the evidence of it is, is taking place across this country. Think about South Carolina just a few years ago. I'm trying to get you to understand the value as a pastor that you need to make sure you have your house in order with God. Don't play with your soul because, number one, your soul don't belong to you. The scripture says plain and day that the soul of the father and the soul of the son, it all belongs to me. Don't play with what is not yours. Because God cares so much about you. Amen? Amen. Turn with me, if you will, to the book of Joshua. Last week I asked you to uh, pull out your vision, your mission, and method statement for those who had it. If you don't have it, raise your hand, Sister Prentice. Do you everybody have theirs? Okay. Listen to me, because we're going to minister from this. 
And we're going to use this as part of our platform of ministering over the next several weeks. Uh, we've been preaching and ministering from the word renew. We're talking about the renewing of our souls and our spirits unto the Lord. If you need one, raise your hand. Miss F Sister Fields has, I mean, uh, Sister Smith has one that she can share, one in front of you, one side behind you. Ushers, will you help her, please, to pass these out? Will you help Sister Smith, please? Come on, come on, come on, move for me. Raise your hands, and the ushers will take care of you. Amen. Hallelujah. And we want to understand who we are, where we are, and what it is that God has positioned us to do and to achieve in this house. I know we don't have all our members here, but I have some watching, but I want to say to all of us, listen, you can't ascertain what you don't know belong to you. Let me say it one more time. You cannot ascertain what you don't know belong to you. And when you get to heaven, you will find yourself missing out of what you could have had, that you should have had, that you didn't get because you didn't know it belonged to you. And I don't want triumphant to miss out on what you're supposed to be living in and what you're supposed to be having in this season, but yet you don't know what it is. Now, I'm not going to get through all of this today. This is a build-up to where I'm going to take us and where God is leading me to share with you in this message today. Turn with me to the book of Joshua, chapter 1. I want to look at the first six verses. I'm going to read it to you from the NIV version of God's holy word. Uh, Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. When you have it, please stand with me that we can read the word of God together. If you have a sister, brother around you that don't have the scripture, please share with them. Please share with them that they can be on the same page as you and I. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through verse number 6. The word of God reads as follows. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give them to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as a promise to Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Hallelujah. Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but Jesus said the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. May God sanctify and bless this word as we proceed together in hearing what God has to say to us. You may be seated in the presence of God Almighty. I want to talk about as we pull out the next letter 
in the word renew. I want to talk about the end. And our subject will be navigating in this season. Navigating in this season. My sisters and brothers and to those who are watching by the airways, it's imperative that we understand who we are and whose we are. It's important, church, that we don't get caught up in the cycle of being as the world turns. Y'all know how the soap opera goes. As you're living in these days of your lives. Because God is not looking for you to be searching for another tomorrow. Because he has you in the palm of his hand. Our responsibility is to trust him with all of our hearts, lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, we are to acknowledge him. And he prophetically promised he will direct our path. He goes on to say, in the book of Matthew, chapter number 33, and I want to read it to you from the King James Version because I think we need to hear this because a lot of us are spending our time chasing the world, trying to become, when all we got to do is do what God say do in his word. Listen what Matthew 6 and 33 says. He said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. A prophetic promise and a guarantee that if we put God first and we seek after his righteousness, everything else that you desire in life, he promised he'll give it to you. Do I have a witness in this place? I wonder today, where do you stand with God and where do God stand with you? I wonder today, do you have faith or are you just like a bag of chips that makes a whole lot of noise when you step on it? We're called to a place to trust him with everything we got. And I recognize now in this setting, as we're looking at Joshua, let me build our text in order for it to make sense to you and I. Listen to this. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 34, I want you to capture something that is written here that Moses recorded. The Bible says in chapter 34, verse number 5, in the preceding verses, he says, so Moses the servant of the Lord died there in the land of Moab according to the word of God. And he, was, he buried him in a valley in the land of Moab over against Beth Peor. But no man knows of his sepulcher until this day. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eyes were not dim, nor his nature was abated. Watch this. Here's what I want you to capture. And the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab 30 days. So the days of weeping and mourning for Moses were ended. And Joshua the son of Nun was full of the spirit of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands upon him. And the children of Israel hearkened unto him and did as the Lord commanded Moses. I'm offering to us today, listen, it's time to remove ourselves from a dead situation. 
I want you to get this this morning. God allowed the nation of Israel to mourn, to weep, to cry, to remember Moses for 30 long days before he moved them to their next blessing. I am suggesting to you and I this morning, it's time for some of y'all to get up out of y'all dead moments and get to the place where God has designed for you to go. You've been there longer than 30 days and God has been encouraging you and been pushing you to move forward, to move on, but you still stuck as if God is not on the throne. God is saying to you and I this morning, it is time to move on. I wonder, are you listening to the voice of God this morning? God is concerned about your pain, but the Bible says he'll give you beauty for your ashes. And he'll turn your weeping into joy. But you got to get up from that dead situation. Yeah, I know it's painful, but God is bigger than your pain. I know it seems like you can't make another step, but trust in the Lord. And when you can't make one, he'll make two for you. Because we serve an able God. And God is trying to teach you how to navigate through those painful situations. Why? Because he won't put no more on you than you're able to bear. God, the Bible declares in the book of John, he's holding you in the hollow of his hand. And everything the devil meant for bad, oh, he's using that thing to turn it around for your good. I wonder, do I have any witness in this place today? God had to get the stuff out of them before he can get them to where he wanted them to go. And I'm glad that I saw that scripture, that they weeped and mourned for 30 days. I'm glad that God let me see that it's okay to cry because the Bible said that they that so in tears. Oh, you're going to reap in joy, baby. You need to understand, don't hang your hat on sorrow. Hang your hat on hope for tomorrow because the God that we serve is a God of hope and he never fails and he cares about his own. Oh, yeah. And he says now, Moses is dead. Well, what do you mean? That situation in your life is over with. Death brings finality. It's over with. There's something else that God is about to do in your life, but he can't do it until you get up. Israel is on the brink of walking into the land that they didn't do anything for. Well, how do you know that, Pastor? I'm glad you asked me. Turn with me to the book of Deuteronomy real quickly. Let me show you. Yeah. God is the one that's doing the work because he made a prophetic promise in Genesis 15, verse 18 that when he had a conversation with Abram, he told Abram to look into the stars of the sky, and look into the sands of the seashore. And he said, if you can number them, he said, that shall be the offspring of your seed. He said, but know this, Abram, I'm going to send them into bondage for a period of 400 and some odd years. But at the end of that time, I'm going to come and visit my people. And I'm going to bring them out on wings of eagles. Oh, Lord, help me up in his mouth. I feel good, I'm telling you. I'm glad that God got me covered, y'all. When I don't see no progress, God bears me up and put me on his back, and he carries me to my next destination. I wonder who I'm talking to this morning. Aren't you ready to get to where God has destined for you to go? Yeah, listen to this Deuteronomy chapter 6. I want you to get this. 
Because God is up to something. Yeah. Because God is up to being God. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 4, and then I'm going to skip down to verse number 10. He says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. But let me read verse 5 also because it plays a valuable part in this. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. Verse number 10. And it shall be when the Lord thy God shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy father, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give thee great and goodly cities, which thou buildest not, the houses full of all good things, which thou fillest not, and wells dig, which thou diggest not, vineyards and olive trees, which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. What's your point, Pastor? I'm trying to suggest to all of us, you didn't get what you've gotten because you've been all of that. It's because God had already made a plan with your forefathers that he was going to bless their seeds. He was going to give you a land. He was going to give you a home. He was going to bless who you are because he made a promise and he got God to his word and you got what you have, not because you're so smart, not because of your connection, not because of your degree, but because God is a God to his promise. Oh, yeah. So here, oh, Israel, and by the way, you Israel, if you didn't know that, you're the spiritual Israel, the church. I came unto my own, and my own received me not. But as many that received me, to them I gave the power to become the sons of the true and living God. You are the spiritual Israel. Listen to me. I am trying to get us to a place to understand now. Listen, when you look at verse number five in Deuteronomy chapter six, and it speaks about you understanding that we must love God with everything we have. Why? Because number one, he's jealous. The scripture says that in the book of Leviticus, when he gave Moses the laws and the Ten Commandments. And he says to them, you don't have to have another God before me because I'm a jealous God. Listen, y'all know how it is. You dating somebody and that person go out and start messing around with somebody else and you find out about it and you ready to jump on not the person that you're dating but the person that he's dating. That's the foolish thing I ever seen in my life, but it happens. Come on, walk with me for a moment. I'm trying to paint you a picture. Listen, God has an issue with the dator and the datee. Because God says to Israel, I am your first love. And if you go out to somebody else, you now committed adultery. And you now have become a whore. Excuse me, young folks, but that's what the scripture says. And some of us don't even get it. God don't bless us. He's given us families. And we're still running after other stuff as if what we have at home is not good enough. Come on, say amen and go with me. We don't been there. Just say amen and come on, walk with me. It's okay to say, ouch, we're in the church. Because the word fits all of us. None of us are perfect. Hallelujah, somebody. I've messed up and you messed up. And none of us can pat ourselves on the back. Hallelujah, somebody. And I'm suggesting to you and I that God is full of mercy. 
and his grace covers us. Listen, listen to me as I bring you to a closing point in this part of the message. Listen, our text brings a sinner to understand God's plan and purpose for our lives. We are charged as moral free beings to choose our future by how we navigate this life in his word. Before Joshua exited this earth, he summoned all of Israel by God's guidance and offered to them two final thoughts. They are born in Joshua 24, verse number 15. He says, listen if you will, but if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve. That's the first point. Whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you are living. He's talking about the Canaanites. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's point number two. I am trying to get you to understand this morning. It's time for us to stop playing church. It's time for us to get serious about doing God's will. It's time for us to wake up and know that God is fighting for you and I. And God is saying to us as the church, the time is now. What I have in store for you is bigger than anything you can ever imagine. Oh, yeah. Listen to me. We got to figure out how to navigate in this season. We got to see what God sees. We got to hear what God is saying. We got to speak what he's telling us. And then we got to put hands and feet to the plow and don't look back and move out and ascertain what he's about to give us. I'm trying to get you to understand, church, that if God hadn't told Joshua, Moses is dead, the nation still will be stuck in the land of Moab. They will still be stuck crying over Moses because they recognized that there was not another prophet like Moses. Because the scripture said in that same chapter of Deuteronomy 34 down to the final verse number 9, it says that God to this day has not raised up another prophet like he did with Moses. I am suggesting to you and I that God is ready to navigate us into our blessing. Oh yeah, well what do you mean? That's why I gave you these printouts. How you going to get there if you don't know where you're going? How you going to receive what's supposed to be yours if you don't know what it is that God wants to give you? See, God told Abram what he was going to give to the people. And then he told the people when God sent Moses down there and brought them out, he says to them, I'm about to take you into the land flowing with milk and honey. The people knew where they were headed. The people knew what God was about to do for them. But because of their lack of faith, it caused them to wander for 40 years around the same mountain, wearing the same clothes, wearing the same shoe, and all of it held on except for their lives. Can you imagine, church? Think about that. Your shoes don't go bad. Your clothes don't go bad. But you die, and they still good. Help me, somebody. You got to see this thing. How is it that clothes are able to withstand the journey, but you die in the journey? That is 
an atrocity to the church. For the stuff that God has given you outlast what he promised you. <laughs> Help me, Holy Spirit. And I'm trying to make sure that we don't miss what God is trying to give us. Listen, listen to me. As I heard to my clothes, listen to me. Hear me, please, church. I am trying to get you to understand that God should be your number one president. He should reign above everything else in your life. Not your job, not your bank account, not your connection, not what you have, your cars, none of those things. It should be God first because he is a jealous God. And when you do it God's way, God will bless your life for eternity. Because he's a God that cannot lie. And nor is he like the son of man that he needs to repent. If he said it, if God said it, if he opened his mouth and said it to his church, he planned on getting us dead. So I want you to look at your vision, mission, and method statement and study it like you never have before. I want you to see what it is that God wants to give you as triumphant and as a people of God. I want you to recognize that we are in the righteous season for such a time as this to prove even to a world that's filled with hatred and anger that God is still in the blessing business and that favor is resting up on the lawns of Triumphant Baptist Church. We have favor like nothing else. We have favor like never before. We have favor and God is showing it unto us. We got favor, church. Just look around and see what God is doing for you. You got favor. God has favor on your life. And only the pure in heart shall be able to see what God is doing. Because it's all about us, I'm telling you. Y'all need to wake up, church. Has nothing to do with no man, not even me. Listen, when God brings them out of Egypt, he had already prepared for them houses and land, wells that they didn't do anything for. Can I suggest to you all, can I suggest to you all this one thought right here as I close? We're sitting here in a place we weren't even doing anything to work for. We didn't put forth the first dime to get it. And God said, I got it already set up for you, triumphant. I already got it put in place. Listen, and you know why the enemy is mad, Brother Victor, Brother Jeffrey? Y'all know why the enemy is mad and they're talking about us? Because they want your blessing. <laughs> listen, God, listen, what God did for Israel then with the original people, Listen, the scripture says when they crossed out of Moab over the Jordan into the new land, which is called Cisjordan, the side they were on was Transjordan, but he crossed them over the Jordan River and put them into Cisjordan. But before they, watch this, before they even got to Transjordan, the folks in Cisjordan had already heard about what God did at the Red Sea. <laughs> oh, help me, Holy Ghost. Oh, I see this thing, y'all. This is life to me. I'm saying to us, they mad because they already see what God is doing for us. They talking about you, and you don't need to be on board talking about yourself. Stay on board with God. And let them talk about us. 
Why? Because what God has for us, it is for us. And can't no devil in hell stop what God has for us. And he ain't through. I know that's bad vocabulary. He ain't through. But he ain't through. And when he gets through, we shall come forth as pure gold. I want to turn over every stone that God told us to turn over. I want to walk in every plane that God has commissioned us to walk in. I want to acquire everything that God has for us. Because next week I'm going to share something with you that God spoke to me to share with you. And only those who have faith will do what God has commissioned me to do for us. Because the just shall live by faith. How many of you got faith? Let me see your hand. How many of you got faith? I, I, I mean, how many of you really say you, you got faith, right? Show up next Sunday then. I'm going to see if you got faith. I'm going to tell you what God told me to tell you. And we're going to do what God told us to do. But your faith will cause you to follow, even when it don't even make sense. Think about that. God tell Moses, I'm going to dry up the Red Sea. What's in your hand? Use it. Don't even make sense, God. How you going to take a rod and tell me to stick it out, Brother Victor, over a river? And you going to dry it up by night? Don't even make sense. But when they woke up the next morning, God spent the night bringing an east wind, dividing the Red Sea, and standing it up on this side. And the nation won't cross on dry land. Because God does things that don't make sense. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. I want to walk in the things that don't make sense anymore. I want to walk in the places where God said we, that he says have it, but the people say we can't. I want to get to those places now. I don't want to leave this pastoral ship. And when I stand before God and God say, Pastor Jones, this is what I told you to do. But because of your fear, because you worry about what folks are saying, I was ready to give it to you, but you were too afraid to do it. I want to get beyond those, and I am beyond those things. I want to do things that don't make no sense. But to God, it's plenty of sense. And I thank him for awakening me for such a time as this. Because he gets the glory and he gets all the honor. Because there is no God like our God. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. Come on, put your hands together for your God. I didn't say for me. Come on, put your hands together for the God you serve. If you love him like you say you love him, come on, bless him if you don't mind. Don't let the world know you're ashamed of the gospel. But let the world know you're not ashamed of the gospel. For it's the power of God unto salvation to the Jews and to the Greeks, to all that believes in him. He is a God that is worthy of our praise, and nobody can stop our God. He's worthy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your favor. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. We thank God for those who have been watching by the airways. We hope and pray that something we've shared in these opening words of our text that will cause you to see God in a different parameter. But most importantly, that you would get up out of that dead situation. Get up out of that dead mindset. Get up out of that dead relationship. Get up out of those dead experiences. And put life to your body and to your heart and to your soul. And let God do for you what he's already promised to do for you. Because it's not in your hands. It's all in the hands of God. And he has you covered. And if you don't know him, simply ask him to come into your heart, into your life. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. 
to cleanse you from your iniquities, that you can be in a place of worship with him. And he will turn your world upside down because he's that type of God. Until next week, may God bless you. May he forever keep you. And may you forever know that he's fighting and has fought and he has won the war for you in Christ Jesus' name. God bless, and we'll see you next week. Amen. Come on, encourage some churches.